السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعلوان إلا على الظالمين والعاقبة للمتقين اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا So there is an emphasis especially in hard times on what du'as should we make what prayers should we make what supplications should we make which ones are the best ones for this situation and that situation. And of course, you know, we start off with this uh, idea and this is this is an established fact that the best dua is the one that's from the heart, the best supplication is from the heart. And when we talk about the prayers of the pious, no one is more pious than the prophets and therefore the prayers of the prophets are the most pious prayers. And there's a very beautiful narration that I'll share with you all today and it has a great story uh, behind it. It's a narration that's narrated in Muslim Imam Ahmad as well as a bazaar. It's an authentic narration and it involves some of the most beloved companions of the Prophet And it's narrated that Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas who uh, is the one narrating this, he says that we were in the era of Umar bin Khattab عنه, meaning he was the Khalifa. And I went to the masjid and I saw Uthman ibn Affan عنه, sitting in the masjid. He said, so I went up to him and he said, not only did we make eye contact, he said that his eyes captured me entirely. Like he had a blank stare and he was looking at me, staring at me directly. And I was right in front of him. And while he was staring at me, I said to him, "Assalamu alaikum," And he didn't respond to me. So he said it was really strange to me. And I was very offended because I went into the masjid. Uthman radiallahu anhu is sitting there and we know who Uthman is, this amazing noble companion of the Prophet sallallahu who is extremely shy, extremely sweet, extremely humble. And you have Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, the, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu so noble, saying to him, Assalamu alaikum, and Uthman completely ignored me. And it's not like he didn't see me, he said he was actually staring at me. He, I, I completely filled up his sight. He said, so... I went to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Khalifa, to ask him about what happened and to, you know, to complain to him basically, to get some context. He said, uh, I went to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu and I said to Umar ibn Khattab, salamu alaykum, peace be on to you. And he said that uh, something very strange just happened. He said, uh, has anything happened new in Islam? Hal hadatha fil islami shay'a? And he said, I asked him twice, has anything new happened in Islam? Meaning, is there some sort of new ruling in Islam that I'm not aware of or something that that, that just, uh, you know, that could make sense of the situation that just happened to me, Umar radiallahu anhu? He said, no. He said, then how come uh, I passed by Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, marartu bi Uthman fil masjid, I passed by Uthman, a man like Uthman, in, out of all places in the masjid, and he said, and I made contact. It's not eye contact. It's not like he didn't see me. I mean, he looked right at me and I was full uh, in front of him. I filled his entire sight. And I gave him salam and he didn't respond to that salam. So Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that's strange. So he called for Uthman. So he says to Uthman in front of uh, Sa'ad, he says, why is it that you did not respond to the salam of your brother? Why did you not respond to the peace the greeting of peace, the salam of your brother. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, what are you talking about? So Sa'ad says, I passed right by you in the masjid and said salam to you and you looked at me and I said salam to you and you didn't respond to my salam. So Uthman radiallahu anhu said, that didn't happen. He said, you did not say salam to me and you didn't even come up to me. I didn't see you today. <laughs> so Sa'ad radiallahu anhu says, hatta uh, halaf wa halaftu. I mean, he said, until he took an oath and I took an oath. So you've got Umar al-Khattab, who's an extremely fair man, uh, just man, sitting with Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas and Uthman ibn Affan, these two great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and both of them are swearing to the opposite thing. They're both taking an oath to the opposite thing. Sa'ad saying, I saw you and I said salam to you. Uthman radiallahu anhu saying that you never came up to me and you never said salam to me. So it's a perplexing situation. So as they're in the midst of the situation, uh, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu said, I started to paint the picture to Uthman, where he was sitting, how I came up to him, uh, when I spoke to him. And as I started to 
remind him of where he was sitting and what happened. Uthman radiallahu anhu suddenly was taken aback and he said, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. I seek forgiveness from Allah and I turn to him in repentance. I seek forgiveness from Allah and I turn to him in repentance. He said to Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, I'm so sorry. I was, I was trying to think of this dua, this supplication. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said that this is a dua that no person would say except that it would remove every uh, hardship. And he said, I never think of this dua or this dua never comes to me except that it completely removes my sight uh, or, or it completely overcomes, overwhelms my sight, my heart and, and everything about me. Okay, so it takes over me when I think of this dua. This is a, a supplication that when I start pondering over it, it completely occupies me. It occupies my sight. It occupies my heart. It occupies my thinking. And I blank out, basically. So he said, now I remember, you know, that sight of Sa'ad radiallahu anhu. That's how preoccupied he was with the supplication. So Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I will tell you what that dua is. I'll tell you what that supplication is. So Sa'ad is going to share with Uthman, I know exactly what prayer you're talking about. He said, I remember that I was sitting with the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him. And as I was sitting with the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, shall I not share with you all the first supplication that if a person says it, then all of their prayers will be answered. And just as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to say that, a Bedouin entered into the gathering. He interrupted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became preoccupied with talking to that Bedouin and addressing him. And we never got the prayer. We never got the supplication that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about. So Sa'id was too embarrassed to say to the Prophet ﷺ, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you forgot to tell us what it was. So he said, so I followed the Prophet ﷺ home after that gathering. And uh, I was hoping he'd take note of me behind him. And just as he was about to enter his house, he said that I made a noise with my foot on the ground. So I kind of struck the ground. It's like someone walking behind you and clearing your throat, clearing his throat, right? So... <clears throat> to catch his attention. So he said that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, who is this? Is that Abu Ishaq? Meaning Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Is that Abu Ishaq? So Sa'id radiallahu anhu said, uh, Na'am ya Rasulullah. He said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. Then he said, I said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the reason why I followed you is because you were about to share with us the first supplication and you were talking about the amazing reward of the supplication. And then the Arabi came, that Bedouin came, and busied you with him. So you didn't get a chance to share it with us. So the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, that is the dua, that is the supplication of the noon of Yunus salam, the Prophet Jonah. He said, that is the supplication that he said as he was in the belly of that whale. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal walimeen. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-walimeen. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-walimeen. There is no God but you. There is no God but you declaring the oneness of Allah. Subhanak, you are free from all imperfection. Inni kuntu min al-walimeen. And I was amongst the wrongdoers. Again, la ilaha illa ant. There is no God but you. Subhanak, how perfect are you? Free from all imperfections and how imperfect am I? Inni kuntu min al I was from the wrongdoers. When he said that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is the most important part of the hadith after the dua. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَمْ يَدْعُ بِهَا مُسْلِمْ رَبَّهُ فِي شَيْءٍ قَتْ No Muslim will call upon his Lord with that prayer at, at all. Okay, so there is no exception to this. So if someone starts thinking, well, I'm not Yunus Islam, I'm not worthy of my dua being answered, I'm not, the Prophet Islam said, no believer will call upon Allah with that prayer, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is illa stajaba lahu, except that Allah will answer his prayers. No Muslim will call upon Allah with that prayer, except that Allah will answer his prayers. Think about that for a moment. Now we've talked about the different ways that Allah answers your prayers. But no Muslim will ever add into their prayer or call upon Allah with La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al except that Allah will remove all of their distress and answer their prayers. 
Now let's talk about this for a moment, inshallah ta'ala, because it's a very profound thing that the Prophet ﷺ is giving to us. Number one, again, don't sit there and think, well, perhaps I'm not worthy, all right? The Prophet ﷺ said, no Muslim will call upon Allah with that prayer. Also remember that when Allah tells us the story of Jonah, the story of Yunus alayhi salam, Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِلْ mu'minin." And just like that, we also rescue the believers. So just like we rescue Yunus alayhi salam, we rescued the Prophet Jonah, كَذَلِكَ نُنْجِلْ mu'minin." That's how we rescue the believers as well, with their words, with that expression, with that sincerity. Yunus alayhi salam represents a person in the lowest of low, calling upon Allah, acknowledging His majesty and His glory with absolutely no imperfection. So Yunus alayhi salam is at his lowest point and he calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, in the darkness of the night, in the darkness of the ocean, in the darkness of the belly of that whale, Yunus alayhi salam calls out from the bottom of the ocean, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al it's an extremely profound narration that the Prophet Sallallahu is giving to us. And I want to talk about a few things with this dua that are, that's usually not spoken about. Number one, Yunus Ali Islam did not uh, ask Allah to be saved, but by his pure expression to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, his pure thana, his pure praise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah saved him anyway. Allah rescued him anyway. Yunus did not ask Allah to remove him from the belly of the whale. He did not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save him in this life. He called upon Allah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And that's because the Prophet sallallahu said that whoever sticks to istighfar, whoever sticks to seeking forgiveness, Allah will take care of all of their affairs anyway. Okay, Allah will take care of all of their affairs anyway. And so he didn't even have to call upon Allah and ask Allah for the specific uh, saving and rescue that he was asked. It was just a complete comprehensive, oh Allah, you are perfect, I am imperfect. You were always generous to me, and I am consistently deficient in my responsibility to you, right? The acknowledgement, Abu, and, and you know, you think about Sayyidul Istighfar, the, the, the master of seeking forgiveness, the Prophet said, the chief of Istighfar, the chief of seeking forgiveness. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu bi dhambi, right? Admitting Allah's blessing upon you and admitting your shortcoming towards Him, okay? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-walameen. So no one is, is excluded from this because كَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَمْ يَدْعُوا Muslim And no Muslim, no believer, no mu'min, no one calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, period, with this dua, except that their dua is answered. How Allah answers it, that's a different story, right? But there is nothing that you could call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more pure and more beautiful than with this dua. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, uh, you know, he did not say, let this be your only du'a, add it to your du'a, let it be frequent on your tongue, and at the same time, add it to your du'a. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned to us to keep our tongues moist with La ilaha illallah, and all of all of the variants of La ilaha illallah. Uh, so, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulku la alhamduhu ala kulli shayin qadir, la ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al you start from the place of La ilaha illallah and then you go to the next part. And this is the dua of the one who is in pain. This is the dua of the one who is in the lowest of low. This is the dua of the one who is anxious. And no one makes this dua sincerely except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer it and remove that which they're calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Now I want to add something else to this which is very powerful. Uh, if you look at how Allah responded to Yunus alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued Yunus alayhi salam in more ways than one and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Yunus even what he had not expected when he made that dua because Allah's answer is always better than your expectation all right in the case of Yunus alayhi salam he was just asking for forgiveness Allah forgave him Allah elevated him Allah saved him Allah returned him to his people and his people who caused him to flee were now coming towards him and had now come to him as believers so again, Allah saved him, Allah forgave him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him, right? Okay, Allah chose him, Allah elevated him, okay? So Yunus alayhi salam after this prayer, after this incident was better than he was before it. He was better than he was before it. He went up a notch, went up a station because of his repentance. Allah saved him. Allah gave him what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned his people to him as believers. Yunus alayhi salam did not expect all of that, right? 
But the purity of that supplication, if it is said purely, is so comprehensive. And that's why the response of Allah was comprehensive, more comprehensive than Yunus Aysam could have possibly comprehended himself. Right? So Yunus had no idea the extent to which that answer would come. And that's how we should be as well in terms of trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worry about the sincerity of your supplication, not the wisdom of the one that you're supplicating to. Worry about the sincerity of your request, not the capacity of the one that you are requesting from. Allah will do his part, you do yours. So again, no one calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen Except that they are responded to Make this a daily habit of yours Add it to your existing prayers Let your tongue be moist with La ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharika lah lahu mulku wa alhamduhu ala kulli shayin qadir Let your tongue be moist with La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen Let your tongue be moist with La ilaha illallah throughout the day And let your heart, let your heart be softened with those words And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one God that we call upon to rescue us from all of our hardships and to elevate us in ways that we could not have imagined, in ways that we are not worthy of being elevated. But Allah is most merciful and most gracious and most wise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with us throughout all of our moments, through our hardship and through our ease, through our difficulties and through our most blessed times. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you all very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.